Since its release, Frostborn has had the best PvP for mobile MMOs. But Albion Mobile just released this week and it is amazing. Many of you might think the winner of this comparison is a given, but if you actually compare the games with each category, these games create an epic clash. I've been playing both of these games since before their global release. I have seen them evolve and shift and both games are amazing. Often they are amazing at the exact same thing, but when you play the two games, it is clear that the foci of the two development teams are in completely different worlds. The first category of comparison is graphics. This is a clear win for Frostborn. Frostborn has some of the most amazing graphics in all mobile gaming, even including the ability to switch to 60 frames per second. Unfortunately, I can't even show you how amazing the game looks at 60 frames per second because this video is only 30 frames per second. Needless to say, if you have a high-end phone or tablet, Frostborn is worth playing just to enjoy these amazing graphics. That being said, Albion's graphics are purposely dumbed down. It has a more pixelated style, which some people like more, and more importantly, by having lower graphics, it allows them to do more, which leads us to the next category. The second category is long-term fun. This is a clear win for Albion Mobile because Albion has 10 times the amount of content that Frostborn does. Now don't get me wrong, both games are a lot of fun and I recommend playing both games, but if you are an advanced player, you will eventually run out of things to do in Frostborn. Some of you will argue with this saying that you can go roam for PvP in the zones, and that is true, but that is you making the most out of the situation rather than the game offering something to you. You might find a lot of great PvP in raids in Frostborn, but you might not, whereas in Albion there are a ton of different mini games and things to do. For example, if you're feeling like you want to do some PvP, you simply click a button to enter the matchmaking for the arena. And Albion has tons of options within those options, like the ability to create a custom arena for just you and your friends. Now, one could point out that Frostborn is possibly going to add those things, and that Albion Online has been around a lot longer than Frostborn because Frostborn was never on the computer. This is a great point, but I will talk more about that a little later on in this video. The third category is Storyline. This is another clear win for Frostborn. Frostborn doesn't have an amazing storyline compared to a storyline centric game, but there is a clear storyline with the goddess Hell being the villain and the need for the people of Midgard to grow in power to defend against her plot. Albion on the other hand doesn't even really try to compete in this category. It has a few stories scattered throughout it, but ultimately it is just a sandbox world in which the players and their guilds create the stories. The fourth category is how friendly the game is to free to play players. This is a much more difficult category to judge than any of the other ones we've done so far, but I think in the end there is a winner. Now for those of you who played Frostborn when it first came out, you might think Frostborn is extremely pay to win because of its class system and how difficult it is to get some of those level 3 classes. But a lot of things have changed since you've played. Frostborn has really listened to their players in the development of their game, and they even came close to apologizing for something, which is not something I've seen Kafir do often. Well, technically they just justified what they did rather than apologize but I'll still count it because it seems like since that moment they have had a change of heart and updates since that point have been very friendly to the community. I love it. I love where they're going. I'm really excited about Frostborn. Albion Mobile might seem at first glance to be very pay to win as well for the exact same reason. Getting to a max level is really difficult and takes even longer than Frostborn. So when you realize that paying for premium gets you twice as much experience and items, it might feel like it's really pay to win, but there are two very important differences here to consider. The first one is that Albion has a lot of game modes in which they equalize the gear level, so even a low level player can experience competing on an equal playing field. This is amazing for new players that like PvP because you get to experience the fun of PvP right off the bat, and in most of those game modes you don't lose your gear if you die, which creates no risk opportunities to learn how to get good at PvP. This is amazing and one of the biggest weaknesses of Frostborn. All PvP in Frostborn makes you lose your gear, meaning those that are good at PvP get more and more opportunities to get better, whereas those that are bad at PvP have to grind more and more and lose a ton of gear to get enough experience to get good. This of course will hopefully change here in the near future, but right now this is a huge weakness for Frostborn. But the second and more important thing that makes Albion way more friendly to free to play players is because it allows them to grind for in-game currency and then trade that in for premium. 
time. So if you grind hard enough, a free to play player can access everything at the highest level. The fifth category of comparison is the grind. This was the most difficult category for me to compare these two games. Frostborn requires a lot less grinding to get to the top and compete at the highest level. In fact, if you're good at PvE and do Odins as soon as you start to get the best gear, and then you're also good at PvP and make sure to position yourself well, you could win a fight against a top player on the first day of playing. Whereas in Albion, as I already mentioned, there are some game types in which that is true, but in the zones, this is definitely not the case. You simply can't wear the best gear on day one, making it pretty difficult to kill an advanced player, even if they try to let you. But the tricky thing about comparing these two games in this category is that because Albion has so much more content, the grind is fun. There is so much diversity in what you can choose to do that it doesn't really feel like a grind. Whereas in Frostborn, donating items to the Altar of Odin definitely feels like a grind. So this one was really tricky and I'm going to end up giving the win over to Frostborn because a busy person that doesn't have a lot of time to play will be able to succeed in Frostborn quicker. But if you have a lot of time to play and you just want to avoid the pain of grinding, then I think Albion would be your best choice. The sixth category is multiplayer. This is an almost clear win for Albion. Albion allows more people in a zone supporting up to 20 versus 20 PvP battles. It has more classes, more skills, and most importantly, more game types. And these game types are so diverse, including everything from doing a dungeon together, different types of arena battles, an assortment of mini games, and claiming territory in the vast open sandbox world. That being said, the PvP in Frostborn is cleaner. Its better graphics and more streamlined skills gives a very different feel to PvP. Being able to taunt real players is something I love about Frostworm, but I don't know if that would actually work in Albion because the game supports more than 4v4. So this is obviously not enough to compete with the pros of Albion, but it is worth noting and leads us nicely into the next category, which is the category of potential. This is another difficult category to compare the two. Albion clearly has so much more content which allows the game to offer more more fun opportunities to its players, but this could also mean that it has already reached its potential because there are situations in which a game can't add any more without changing some of the feel of the game. That might not be true of Albion, but it is definitely something to consider. Whereas Frostborn hasn't even gotten close to its potential, the content is lacking and the developers are producing new updates every few weeks. So if the developers continue to listen to the players as they have been doing for the last few updates, I think the potential is there. That being said, it is too hard for me to to compare that potential with the potential of Albion, so I'm going to let you guys decide. If you have played both games, please make a comment below with your opinion of which game has more potential and why, and then upvote or downvote the other comments based on whether or not you agree with them. Hopefully the best comments will rise to the top and we will get to see a good depiction of what the community thinks about the potential of these two games. Well, that's it guys. Hope that helps. If you like this video and how I think about games, make sure to check out my video on the top 10 MMORPGs of 2021. And then if you like that video, I have top 10 game videos on several other genres as well. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.